Hello and welcome to IndriTheJedi.com and my name of course is Indri the Jedi and let me begin today with a story, alright? Now, last year, I believe you guys have been aware of this uh, new NVIDIA technology called RTX It's a new range of graphics cards that they launched, okay? So, what happened was that I used to have a previous graphics card which was, uh, in fact, let me find it here right here it was the i hope you can see it properly this is the gtx 670 basically i used this card for about five years or so and i managed to get by just fine it just had two gigabytes of ram and yeah i was able to do most of my work until as time went on of course problems began to occur i could no longer render heavy scenes like any file which had two or more trees will just not be able to render anymore in, using the renderers that I was using. So basically, today's topic is all about graphics card hardware, okay? And for those who know me personally, graphics cards for me are just the best thing on earth, okay? Because imagine using the power, we can visualize things, all right? So as I started my story with this card in particular, this actually was borrowed from uh, Mr. Dave Lockwood. Thank you so much to him because, oh, I was really in a, in a very bad situation because the card I was using, what happened was that it was busy in the middle of a render. And then, I don't know what happened, my screen turned a bright red and then a bright blue and then a bright green and then the, sp the screen completely went black. That's when I knew that, you know what, I think this is nothing more than the complete death of a graphics card. It was so sad to witness that moment, but on the positive, I told myself that, you know what, at least it died doing what it was born to do, which was to render, okay? That is, of course, if you are not using it to play games and so forth, but that is a topic for another day. All right, so that is the old generation GTX 670, okay? Now, as time went on, about uh, almost six months ago, I bought the new RTX 2070, all right? And I was able, again, to do much of my work. It's, in fact, the first project I used it on was to render the, the, the house construction for the client in the Trinidad and Tobago, all right? It did everything nicely, and I was happy with the work. And it was, of course, like, how can I say, maybe 10 times faster than the old graphics that I used to use. And it had 8 gigabytes of RAM. And everything went well until one day I was listening to an audiobook like I always do and then while trying to be sort of falling asleep and then I was awoken by the most deafening sound and most terrifying sound you can imagine from your own computer it was this, the sound of a, a fan whining so fast so hard that I told myself you know what I hope it's not, it's not what I'm thinking that it could be and yes my worst nightmare was realized it was the graphics card, the RTX 2070, which just gave up on me. It was such a scary moment, like I cried literally, okay? Because it was like witnessing the death of your favorite item on this planet, you see. So, luckily, the, the, company, that, the company I bought it from is called Rebel Tech here in South Africa. I wrote, them, I wrote to them a very detailed email in which I described everything that happened. And then I also went on online for ideas on what could have gone wrong. And according to several people on the internet, they suggested that the thermal paste might have dried up. Okay, like just imagine the thermal paste on a graphics card drying up. And of course, I took what they said uh, seriously. And I, I used my own screws and then, and then I was, I didn't care about voiding the warranty. By that time I was so desperate. I unscrewed every bolt on that graphics card until I could, I could reveal the, 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 the thermal paste itself. And yes, people were correct. The, there was barely nothing left when it comes to the thermal paste on the graphics card. I'm gonna put pictures, hopefully the, the pictures are appearing right now as to what I encountered, you know? So basically people were correct online that yes indeed, the thermal paste, by the way, for those of you who don't know, the thermal paste is basically the interface between your graphics card and the heat, the, the heat dissipation mechanism. The moment, the moment that paste dries up, your graphics card of course begin to overheat. And then of course, it will rather protect itself by stopping to display anything. 
And so, after that whining sound, the computer screen just went black. Although I could still hear the audiobook in the background. So in other words, the computer was still running. It just had a graphics display which had been knocked out. Alright, so I wrote a very long email to the guys at Rebel Tech and they were so they were so helpful because by then it was December, it was holidays. So there was no shipping of computer components here in South Africa at that time. Alright? But I, I wrote it in the faith that they will receive it and then see what they could do. Alright. But in the meantime, because I had deadlines to meet, so I had to buy a replacement graphics card, alright? And then let me show you now what it looks like. So yeah, this is the computer case. I'm taking it closer to you, that way you guys can see. So this is uh, the GeForce RTX 2070 Super <laughs> by MSI, all right? And I want to give you an um, unboxing experience. So let me see, uh, let, let's change the camera in here so that you guys can see what I'm, I'm doing here. So allow me to unbox it along with you guys so that you can see what it's all about before, before of course it finds its home in the case of the computer. All right, so what have we got here? Okay, yeah. we've got this uh, black folder here. Looks like a secret, top secret document eh? of the highest level of importance. Wow. <laughs> and yet it's nothing more than just the manual. But I, I like the, the professionalism. All right. Let me just fold it properly. So yeah, got that beautiful MSI logo there. Let's put it here. And then, what do we get? Yeah, let's see. Okay, we've got our shroud here. And out of it comes, there we go, the card itself. It's got two fans, and then I'm going to explain to you, oops, I'm going to, to explain to you what the two fan setup is all about. Then of course, at the back we've got our HDMI port and our display, display port and so forth. All right, of course you can see the copper tubing there for the cooling. And of course, a beautiful back plate, I have to say. I really love this back plate, you know? Okay, so, and of course, we've got our two fans there, which will be spinning for however long we need them to. All right. And let me just have a much more smoother showcase of what this card is all about. Beautiful, eh? <laughs> all right. Beautiful. I really love the back plate. They really put some thought into it. It's like brushed metal. Beautiful. Beautifully done. All right. Then, the, my story continues. I'm not yet done. <laughs> All right. So, after Rebel Tech, the, 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 so, the IT company, which, which sold me the previous card which died because of the fan noise, after they reviewed my, my email, they sent me a very long form to fill for the warranty application. And by then, my card was already like seven months out of warranty and they only covered it up to six months. So I wrote, I, I was as detailed as possible and they said of course they couldn't promise anything. But I was hoping of course they wouldn't let someone sit on such a loss, you know, because these cars don't come cheap anyways. All right. So after literally a couple of days, they got back to me and they said, no, Asus uh, heard, your, heard your problem and then they, they, they realized indeed it was a fault on the card itself. It was not my fault. So I was so pleased. It was like one of the happiest days of my life, I have to say, because number one, I never saw a warranty form to be filled. This was my first time to fill one. And number two, you've got a manufacturer who actually listened to the customer. And then what did they do? Guess what? <laughs> Yes, there you have it. They sent the replacement card by Asus. And let me let me do the following, just to keep things tidy here. I'm going, yeah, I'm just going to create space here. All right, and just show you because you there, there is differences between these two cards. Okay, so we've got the one there. Let's put it casing here, and then of course we've got the replacements. Right. 
And by the way, I don't know about you guys, but I always save my covers. Eh? They're always so nice. I even have the cover of the very first graphics card I ever bought. <laughs> Memories. Eh? And then, whew, there we go. Asus in search of incredible. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so what have we got here? Mm -hmm. Again, similar to the MSI packaging. And then, of course, we've got yet another shroud. <laughs> let me put this here. And then, oh, let me just do this. And then, what do we get? Look at that. <laughs> Asus RTX 2070 Super. What they, what Asus told me was that number one, they are sorry about the problem, and then they were actually going to upgrade me to the latest one they were manufacturing because the one I had was no longer in production because six months had passed, and you know these things are produced regularly. So what we have here, let me bring it for you closer. You see, and of course you can see the difference. It's only got two fans, right? So, after this unboxing, let me just put them side by side and then let me discuss them further with you guys, okay? And so, this is where we then find ourselves with two of these, all right? By the way, now, this is where I'm gonna get a bit technical because remember, this is part of my new way of uh, uh, co uh, uh, presenting content to you, my viewers, all right? So, what is the difference, okay? Number one, they are both RTX 2070 Supers. So in essence, underneath, they're exactly the same graphics card, okay? The only difference is the way in which they cool themselves. You see this one here only has one fan, right? Meanwhile, this has got two. There are other graphics cards which have three or four or four fans. And let me tell you what's the difference, okay? Beginning with this guy here, in fact, before I take them back, I just want to show you yeah, the differences, all right? And of course, this one I think has a better backplate than this one. Eh? <laughs> this one looks more technical. All right, so let's continue. What's the difference? In this case here, where you've got two fans, what happens is that air in your computer case, the air comes through it circulates, right? Or the, the heat coming from the graphics card itself is pumped out of the, the graphics card components here and then it's expelled through these fans. And what do the fans do? They take that hot air and then push it back into the computer case. I hope you understand that. So in other words, while you are rendering or if you are playing a game, the heat which is being generated by your graphics card is concentrated around this area and then the heat is then sent to the fans and then the fans take that heat and then they push it into the computer case. Now, this causes a few problems. Number one, if you have many of these cards, like myself, I've got two, two of them here. If you've got two of them next to each other, they will be fighting for air because number one, your case will become a bit too hot for comfort. Don't worry, your computer will not burn. What will simply happen is that the, the component will self, simply throttle itself down to the point where as you render for more and more hours, it will take you longer to render the same frames because the poor graphics card is just getting too hot and it's, it's trying to find a way to get rid of its heat. And of course, the heat has nowhere to go but right inside your computer case, okay? I bought this, why? Because after the graphics card which died, we had one fan. I went like, you know what, just to be safe, I'd rather have a mixture of different kind of graphics cards. That way, should they die, at least I know one will still remain working while I find a replacement. So once again, two fans, it's great design, but then it takes the heat, pumps it right inside your computer case, and your whole case will end up heating up. All right, so it, it's fine if you only have one of these in your computer, but the moment you add more than one, then it begins to come, become a problem because there's more and more heat which will be staying inside the computer case and they have to find a better, a, a more efficient way to be expelled out of the case. Okay, then... 
Hello and welcome to HindriTheGeta.com It's been a while, I know, but I'm back. <laughs> welcome, thank you for so much, thank you so much for having joined me. And yeah, I'm hoping to take you through quite an interesting year this year. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take one, take one step forward just to address you, all right? Hopefully the lighting, of course, is working very well. And I'm hopefully able to point to you some of the computer components I'll be showcasing to you. And then let me just take a few steps back to continue talking and seeing how the shadows are showing. <laughs> okay, now we're about to do, or rather we're about to answer the most pressing question of our modern time. How do you install a graphics card? <laughs> All right. Uh, at first, by the way, I managed to find that, that old GTX 670 which died. Yeah, this is the one which turned, which turned the screen blue and red and then the screen turned black. So this was the one that I used for five years, you know. It, it did all it could do, you know. I really loved it. And for those of you who have been following me, you'll notice that there was a time when I posted a picture when I actually bought it. And I was hoping to do some reviews and render tests. But of course, sadly, it died before I could even get a chance to. <laughs> all right. Now, if we sort of we don't waste any further time. And of course, this was the replacement card. Okay. So hopefully the camera is completely focused on this. And of course, our lights, of course, are nicely shining through. That way you guys can, of course, focus on what I'm about to do next. For those of you, of course, who don't know how to place a graphics card, all right? And then some words on, on uh, some hardware here. All right. What kind of a motherboard do I have? First of all, let me just... Uh, open this case. I love cases with side panels because as an artist you gotta be able to see what's going on man. You know, you can't just have a completely, you know, opaque system case not knowing what's going on inside, you know, because this just lets you bond even better with your hardware. All right, so by the way, this case is an NZXT uh, system case. I think it's an H440 if I remember correctly, all right? So now, uh, first things first, what, can, what, is, what is this and what is really happening here? All right, first things first, the motherboard that I have here is capable of having up to 128 gigabytes of memory, of system memory. The reason why I bought, I made sure it was the case was because, remember I also do music composing, and I was shocked to find just how much system resources music production can actually take. So that's why I had to go for a compressor which can take up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, okay? And of course, I don't know if you can see, if you're able to see the RAM slots, there is about four rows of them on either side, okay? What you've got here is the copper, copper CPU cooler, all right? It's huge, why? Because it works. Because what happens is that at the very bottom, my, the CPU is there because I didn't want to go for water cooling because that one is just quite too much maintenance. So with this one, it simply takes the heat which is coming from the CPU and like I said, the CPU you cannot see it. It's at the very bottom and then the heat rises and then the heat is nicely spread over these copper towers. And then sandwiched between them are huge fans which spin kicking air as the heat is being, you know, manipulated, all right? So it's a very efficient way and it's nice and quiet. So there, there was never a need for me to, to go for water cooling. Although, if you observe well, this entire section here on my case is capable of supporting water cooling uh, blocks, all right? And in fact, here, there is about, uh, I think about, uh, is it four? Four system fans in front here and then one big fan at the back here. The aim, of course, is, is to deal with air. So this, the, the fans which you cannot see here in front, take out the air and then pump, pu uh, push, push the air inwards. And then, of course, once the air gets in here, you, make, you can imagine all the heat coming from the graphics card. All of that is exhausted at the back here. You know, so it's this big fan here which takes care of the final extraction of hot air. All right. So not only can this motherboard support up to 128 gigabytes of RAM because I do music, 
by the way, uh, you should also check out my music store, all right? Cool songs over there <laughs> for your music, for your, for your, that you can use in your portfolios and so forth, or in your projects, all right? And then in here, you've got this, this here, one, two, three, four, PCI Express slots. These are the places where the graphics cards will go. All right, and as you can see, of course, this computer can support up to one, two, three graphics cards if I wanted to. In other words, I can run three graphics cards at, its, at, at a given time. All right, but of course, we only have two cards for now, so that is out of the question. And then also here, we've got our, our power supply. Very important. If you are going to be powering up two of these very demanding graphics cards, I think you need about, I think about 600 watts power supply. And because when I bought it, I made sure it was also, I was, I was also catering for the future. My power supply is 850 watts. It's by Corsair, okay? You cannot see it again because it's behind this shroud of NZXT cover. All right, and then all the normal hard drives are hiding in here. Hard drives are ugly to look at anyways, that's why they're completely done away. But what I have instead here, the one which is written Corsair MP510, that is the NVMe solid state drive. That is where the operating system sits and where whichever programs which, are, which take too long to load, like 3D Max for instance. So Udini, 3D Max, Maya, they're all sitting on this, on this uh, solid state drive here. It's ultra fast, you know, you can boot it within seconds. That's why all the heavy programs sit there and all the uh, slow things that I don't need to access quickly are sitting on normal hard drives, which you cannot see right now, okay? And of course, when you do have a power supply, make sure, of course, it's got enough connections for your graphics cards. Because I was shocked to find there was a time when someone needed to, someone had bought a graphics card, and they only found out it could not even connect the pins to the card because its power supply was just too weak. So just always beware and always buy, you know, things which will last you a while. Because, yeah, this, I've been with this, with this, uh, with this power supply for as long as I can remember, possibly eight years, and I never had a problem, you see. All right, so, and by the way, the motherboard is an MSI X99 SLI Plus, all right. So, the, the CPU is an Intel Core i7, uh, I think it's 52, uh, I forgot the code name, but it's a Core i7, all right. Okay, so, I'm then going to, Gently, let me see if uh, we can zoom in further so that we can see the assembly. And yeah, hopefully, of course, I've zoomed enough. Let me just check. Yeah, we are now as close as we can to the inside of this computer. All right, so now, whichever graphics card takes the first slot normally is the primary, will normally be the primary display card. In other words, that's why you normally hook up your, your HDMI cable so that you can display onto your monitor. All right, now, because I value this card so much that I don't want it to die too soon, <laughs> yeah, I don't mind connecting this one as a primary card, okay? So that this one will only kick in when it's needed, but this one will be running all the time. All right, so, you just make sure you have enough clearance and then yeah by the way before you do this before you do this let me just do this let me just clean up whatever little dust that is still there okay all right so because whether i don't care what people tell you dust is bad that is the enemy of computer components because the more dust gathers the more it forces the, comp the components to to maintain heat you see, so it's not good. You have to get rid of the dust whenever you can. So this primary here will go over here. Be gentle as you can be. And of course, always make sure you've removed enough of this cruiser before you position your card. I think, let me just get this one out of the way. And then, yeah, here we go. Be gentle. And it should be a simple, there we go. And see if you get that feeling of uh, something snapping into position there. Okay, and then of course, where does the second card come? Of course, I want to leave room between the, the cards. Although, check this out. Let me remove the shroud here. Let me 
rip them over the shroud. Yeah, and this part here, there we go. Any plastic, get rid of it. You don't want, because you, you won't believe what happens when these things overheat. The plastic can be bad news when things overheat in here. So what I was saying is that, in theory, I could take this card and place it right underneath this one. You see, you see that? You see how they can stack together. And by the way, by the way, you see this part here? This part here. You'll notice even this one has got it. This, this is where it gets interesting, okay? This is where NVIDIA will sell you what they call an NV-Link. It's basically like a bridge. It's like those old bridges from uh, SLI, uh, SLI systems. Basically, it enables you to buy an NVIDIA bridge and then hook up these two cards and then together they will act as one. Especially in renderers like Redshift. You understand? So in other words, remember here I've got 8 gig RAM. This has also got 8 gigabytes of RAM. But with that bridge and the new versions of Redshift or Octane and so forth, they will act as if they were one card using 16 gigabytes of RAM. That way, if you have a scene, if you have one scene which couldn't fit on one of these cards, then that scene can definitely fit on these two cards because remember, they'll be sharing all the resources as if they were one card. Okay, and always remember, and in fact, this is a matter of fact, two RTX 2070 Supers is faster than one RTX Titan and much cheaper. Okay, always remember that, that these two cards are cheaper than an RTX Titan and much faster than that. They're even cheaper than an, than an RTX 2080 Ti and much faster. The only difference is that those other cards have much more RAM. Okay, so just always be aware of that, that when you are stuck with a decision to make, always go for two of these, or two of these, uh, two of these high-end cards than one of those extremely high-end cards which just cost too much, and yet is slower than these two. Alright, so I'll leave these, uh, these, these, uh, uh, they call them envy link fingers yeah i'll leave them like that for now because remember i haven't bought the bridge yet but when i do buy the bridge i'll definitely remove them and then just create a connection between the two all right wonderful that's what and by the way you can only bridge two of the same card you cannot bridge an rtx 2080 with an rtx 2060 for instance or RTX 3, the 3060 and an RTX 3080, depending on which cards they release in the future. You can only bridge two cards which are identical. Like I said, they might look different, but on the inside, it's still the same card. Just, they just differ in the cooling. All right. So like I said, in theory, I could put this card right here, right below. But you can see, of course, there's nowhere for the air. To, to go through so because while i'm holding this huh, check this out i'm going to take one of the old one of the other cards just to show you what i was saying that this card this computer can take three graphics cards you see that i'm able to squeeze in a third one you see you see that but of course it's it makes things very tight in here all right okay all right so what we need to do is make room over here. So I'm going to untighten here. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's pop this one. And then of course, bring it in. And remember where it has to sit. Yeah, in fact, it needs this also to go. That is why they call this Two slot cards in other words it takes you see it clears out two PCI lane slots to make room for one of these cards but beware there are those cards which take more than two cards like this one here which I was using before you see you see the thickness it's two slots plus a half you see so when you when you put them next to each other let me just bring this next to each other you can see, of course, how much thicker. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. You can see, of course, how much thicker 
this one is all right so just be aware of that that this when you buy a graphics card make sure yeah just check how much space it will take you know thickness wise all right it's very important or else sometimes you might buy a card which is just too thick to have multiple of them so yeah now it can gently go in be gentle always okay i'm gonna be quiet while i do this clear anything there we go until you hear the snapping sound and then of course time to screw things into place all right and you have to tighten them nicely the, a graphics card must always sit securely all right it must not be hanging or, or, or sagging yeah or else it might even deform deform your motherboard let me tight, tighten this into position oh, it's too heavy okay let me just tighten it quickly the screws and yeah see i'm not tightening this one as well yeah because remember it must sit comfortably okay no tilt or anything like that all right let me see yeah, it's proving to be a bit of a challenge here but yeah it has to be done there we go and tighter there we go nice okay perfect so now if i shake it you see it hardly moves it's nice and firm all right then of course comes the the important part of connecting the the the, the wires all right so you'll notice of course you have to pay attention to how many there are that way it guides you as to where they must go and luckily the power supplies of today come with nice labels you can see there now pcie then you know this is for the pci express the graphics card okay so the, let's start with this one for instance uh, you check the connections there they go they flow downwards it seems here so I'm going to do that there we go you 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 have to hear that sound when it's snapping into place okay and then this one here uh, maybe we may have to swap them let's see okay this one oh let me see okay please wait yeah in fact this is very easy you, you can see for instance in my case there is one two three four rows and then followed by three rows so in other words i know a stack of four of them must go followed by a stack of three so for instance in this case let's see I think we actually had it right the first time. Stack of three goes like that. Then the stack of four. Just checking the direction that they must take. Mm, let's see. There we go. So you see, now of course it's 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 it wants an extra one. So you just hook up this ones. Hopefully. There we go. Nice and easy. So you see. Just like that, we've sorted the first the first card. And then, of course, the second one is waiting. Again, the same principle where a stack of four have to go. You always watch out for the direction of these of these cubes, yeah. Okay. And there we go. That goes like that. Hopefully, this uh, my camera is able to record everything nice and clearly. There we go. That is done. And then, of course, we are then left with this. And just like that nice and easy now this one says here cpu so it's not being used at all so i'm just going to push it where it cannot be seen just to keep things pretty looking all right we only want to expose what is necessary being an artist also means staying keeping tidy okay you can't have cables all over the place it will also affect your workflow it will even affect your render speed apparently <laughs> i'm just joking all right so now there we go now we've got this beautiful array of things let me just say i'm looking next to them <laughs> all right 
So this is nice and beautiful, okay? And let me capture this as things are looking now. Very neat. You see that? Yeah, let me capture things from this angle. Yeah, this is very gorgeous. Very neat. With enough room, of course, in between the cars to breathe. And then I think from here I can show you some of the parts which you couldn't see from the other angle. Yeah, you see, these are the two fans I told you about. They, they kick the hot air coming from the CPU, which is at the base there. It, the heat rises and then it comes into these copper pipes. Okay, and then the pipes are also helped by the fans to keep, you know, just to keep the airflow uh, moving and so forth. All right. And then, of course, this is that fan at the back which expels the rest of the hot air. Okay. And then, of course, this case is so nice. You even have room to play to place your your regular looking uh, solid state drives. Although, like I said, my solid state is that one there because I, I just love the way it looks. All right. It's, and it's normally I think it's faster than uh, than a normal SSD. All right. And then let me see if I can open the front here to show you guys. Uh, oops. To show you guys what I meant that the, that the fans in front of here. Please wait. And there we go there we go and as you can see it comes with some nice uh, noise reduction uh, foams you know just to keep your case nice and quiet and you see yeah and then it, it, there is this magnetic uh, layer here which also just acts as extra filter for dust you know and it comes with ease like that and then of course there are the fans i told you that you cannot see and they work very hard getting air you know flowing you know outwards you see this is how a case a, a computer case ought to be okay so i'm just gonna slap it back on and let me just show you what they look like inside there it's quite interesting all right that's why I, that's why i love this computer case okay and let's see let's just there we go let's close it off there we go yeah just have to make sure of course that it's completely closed and yet another look before we say goodbye <laughs> okay yeah and this is a look from another angle and i would advise please clean up dust off your computer roughly every six months because dust does build up and you don't want that all right and then even at the bottom here of the of the power supply there's a tray you see just together just together whatever dust that might be coming from under the case all right so it will trap them here that way they don't make it into the computer very very efficient way of having things okay and of course yeah from here yeah you can clearly see the copper the copper this copper tower all right i think this one is um as uh deep cool yeah deep cool assassin 2 that is this is the name of the of the of the cpu cooler okay I, it's so tall it's so heavy but yet it doesn't break the computer i'm surprised yeah you see all the ram the ram slots there there's one there and then of course there's another set over here if you can see them then of course if you can sort of look there are all the hard drives hiding in there all right and then upwards up if you look up into the case you see the space where you can store more fans you see especially for those who do um, uh, water cooling on their computer cases okay so where is our lid Please wait. Let me fetch the lid and yeah. Let's close this chapter. All right. Please wait. Holding it into position. Yeah. Okay. Let me just pause here. So this is the setup before they go into the case. I mean, before I power it on.
And so we reach the dramatic finale of this particular tutorial or walkthrough or whatever you may want to call it on how to put together graphics cards in your computer case. And it, of course, this lesson we went beyond just how to insert graphics cards in a computer case. We're going to learn about why some graphics cards are designed the way they are designed, you know? What can you do with two graphics cards in today's age? How can you save money by buying two cheaper cards which will be faster and more cost effective than your ultra high-end car? So those are the kind of information, of course, we got to learn so much about and more. We even got to learn about computer components, you know? Why do you need a CPU cooler? Why is mine so big? <laughs> I guess at, at least I got, to, I got to tell you guys about why that is the case. Why do you need a motherboard which can take up to three graphics cards or more? That way, of course, you build your computer which is roughly future-proof. All right, because if I didn't do this, I will find myself in a situation where I will have to upgrade every year. But of course, knowing that I can, I can just swap out graphics cards as they evolve, I don't have to worry because most of my renders are, done, are not done on the CPU anyways. All right, the CPU is just used to transfer the data, the instructions to the graphics cards. After that, the graphics cards take it all the way. All right. So you can let me know in the comments below whether you want to see more of such content in the future. All right. Because I'm here, you know, to teach you guys like I've been doing for the past 10 years. So I just want to, you know, take things to the next level of professionalism. So you can let me know in the comments below what kind of content you can ex you want to see on this channel. And of course, don't forget, of course, before you rush home, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, to like my Facebook page, my Twitter, my Instagram, because really this year, I just want, you know, to go for the stars, to put it in, a, in another way. All right. So hopefully, of course, uh, you, 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 have some, you have learned something or two in this lesson. And yeah, you will believe, of course, I'm Indri the Jedi. Until next time, stay tuned. <laughs> So yeah, this is the closing shot before I say goodbye to this shot here. This was great. I really enjoyed making this. Hopefully, you guys will let me know, of course, in the comments below whether you want to see more and more of such content. And of course, yeah, I can't wait to power my, my beast on and let it render. <laughs>